Hi, I'm Vin with Boris Effects, and in this quick tutorial, I'm going to use the Organic Strands filter to create exotic visual effects like these, which are perfect for opening title sequences. Okay, to begin, we're here in After Effects, and the first thing I want to do is create a new solid. It doesn't matter what color it is, but let's go ahead and rename it Strands. This is the layer that I'm going to do all of my initial work on, so let's go over to the Particle Units category and drag Organic Strands right onto it. Now, Organic Strands is a pretty cool filter that allows me to manipulate, well, these organic strands. I can adjust their source point, add in a destination, control the organic noise, and a whole lot more. It's a very versatile filter for creating abstract particles, geometric shapes, and even matrix style effects. To recreate my sci-fi title, what I want to do is begin by increasing the number of strands on the screen. I don't want too many, as it can affect render times, but you can see that right out of the gate I can use this to create some pretty interesting effects. For this project, I'll set my strand amount to around 45. The length looks good, but I, I don't want everything to be uniform. By adjusting the length variance, I can create a bit of texture and depth. With the thickness and thickness variance parameters, I can refine the overall width of the strands to create a more natural look. Now, depending upon your project, feel free to play around with the color of your strands. For this project, I'm going to stick with the red-yellow default gradient, but at the end we'll come back and play around with subtle adjustments to drastically change the look of the project. Okay, in the source subgroup I can change my X, Y, and Z position, but I can also quickly reposition them by using the on-screen widgets. Once I have things where I want them, I want to open up the organic noise subgroup. Here, I can change the bendiness and overall wiggliness of the particles. I can adjust the noise frequency preset in the strand itself, as well as its thickness, opacity, and evolution. By adjusting the bend parameters, I can straighten the strands out or even push them into more complex and interesting shapes. I can also adjust the evolution speed, which is how fast the strands move organically. For this project, I want to increase that speed just a little bit. With that done, I want to close the noise subgroup and open up the particle subgroup. There is one small tweak here that will make a really interesting change to my look. The default round blurs are nice, but I want to try something a bit different. To change the particle image, I'm going to toggle Image Collection. This will allow me to select a new image for my particle shape from the pull-down menu. Cycle through to find the one that works best for you, but for me, I'm going to go with Ghost Arms. And you can see this creates an interesting, almost insect-like texture. By making changes to the rotation parameters, I can change the rotation of the particles. If they were simple round blurs, the rotation really doesn't do much. But since I've selected a more complex shape, rotating the particles shifts the perspective to create brand new shapes. Additionally, the rotate spirality parameter will rotate the entire strand, allowing for even greater customization. Okay, so this is looking nice, but the particles are a bit too undefined for my taste. I want to use the built-in 3D camera to move within the nest that we have here. When I open up the built-in camera subgroup, the first thing I want to do is adjust the camera position in Z-space. Doing so will allow me to move the camera through the organic strand nest. It'll also allow me to really see the detailed texture of the individual particles, which are now looking less like generic lines and more like some sort of H.R. Giger xenomorph alien tail. If I switch my camera into orbit, I can use the spin parameter to rotate that nest. Since I previously offset it, as I rotate the spin parameter, the nest is going to move in this parabolic motion. By keyframing the first frame and setting the spin to something like negative 19 degrees, I can move to the end of my timeline and create another keyframe for negative 13 degrees. It's a small change, but by creating a subtle camera movement, I can give my effect this really ethereal look. Okay. There's one more thing I want to do before moving on to finish off the effect. These strands are all well and good, but the objects in the background are in the same level of focus as my foreground. To add an extra layer of polish and some realism, I'm going to go and toggle the depth of field for my camera. Now to better understand what's happening here, let's look over some of the quick basics of the way light is focused in a lens. Focal distance is of course the distance at which an object is brought into focus. Longer focal lengths will bring further objects into focus, for example, like a telescope. Whereas shorter focal lengths bring nearby or smaller objects into focus, for example, like a microscope. By reducing the focal length, my background will begin to fall out of focus, while my foreground is going to remain in focus. 
The next feature is aperture, which simulates the amount of light that hits the lens. This is similar to f-stops on a camera, and the lower the aperture, the wider the range of distances that will be in focus. By increasing my aperture, I can limit the range of objects in focus so that the far away strands are still visible, but definitely not as sharply focused as the foreground. Because I don't want the background to look too blurry, I can adjust the amount of blur as needed to find something that doesn't look too smudged. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's add a few things to really make this pop. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and label it Center Flare. In my lighting unit, I'm going to select Lens Flare 3D and drop that right onto the adjustment layer. Now in my preset menu, I'm going to select Yellow Star with Orbs, and this is a good start, but I want to make a few changes. I'm going to drop the global intensity to something a bit more manageable. I don't want it to overpower my effect. When that's done, I'm going to come down here and turn off all the features except for Flare, Hollows, Texture Orbs, and Chromatic Aberration. In the Flare subgroup, I'm going to drop that scale to something really low, like 0.4. And then I'm going to move the center point to right in the middle of my nest. I can also tweak the color a bit to be more reddish if I want. With that done, I'm going to set my Layer Transfer Mode to Screen. Next, I'll create a new adjustment layer, and this time I'm going to label it Side Flare. Once again, I'll apply Lens Flare 3D, and I'm going to select Yellow Star with Orbs. As before, let's drop that global intensity just a bit, and this time I want to enable Fog. But while I do that, I want to make sure that I disable Stripe and Texture Orbs. In the Fog subgroup, I'm going to increase the intensity and give it this burnt orangey-red color. Once that's done, I want to animate this off-screen. So with my CTI on the first frame, I'll enable the stopwatch for built-in light source position, and then use the on-screen widget to drag that flare to the top left. I can then set another keyframe on the very last frame and drag my position downward, animating a very subtle movement that occurs just outside the frame. I want to create one more new adjustment layer, and this time I'm going to name it Finishing. In my Film Styles unit, I'm going to go and select Fast Film Glow and drag that right onto my layer. In the presets, I'm going to select Cool Blue. Let's nudge up that intensity just a little bit. I want to restrict my glow somewhat. I don't want it to be too overpowering, so I'm going to drop the glow radius to around 6, and then I'm going to increase that glow threshold just a bit. And when I play it back, that's looking pretty nifty. Now since I want to use this as a title effect, I'm going to go ahead and add a simple text layer and give it just a little bit of movement. I can then take the pen tool and create a mask around my text. By pressing M on the keyboard, I can bring up my mask path, and I want to set this to subtract so that it removes the image. Then, with my CTI in the first frame, I'm going to click on my stopwatch, and I can animate the mask by moving forward a few seconds and adjusting the mask shape so that the text is no longer invisible. By pressing F on the keyboard, I can bring up my feathering parameter and soften off those edges. That's looking pretty good, but to finalize this whole effect, I'm going to go and drop Fast Film Glow right onto my text layer. I'll set my preset to Color Push Red Glow. I can then increase my glow radius until I get this nice, really soft glow. But then let's move the CTI to the moment that my text is fully on screen. I'm going to set a keyframe on my X radius and move forward a few frames, bring it down a bit so that I can get these nice vertical lines. Then I'm going to move forward a bit and again bring the X radius back to 100. By pressing U, I can bring up all of my layer keyframes, and then I can adjust my timing so that my text appears to pulse. To give it some added oomph, let's do the same animation, but this time for intensity. Feel free to play around this until you get something that works for you. Now when done, I'm just going to add BCC Drop Shadow to the text to give it a little bit of that extra definition, and there you go. One of the great things about a project like this is that once it's set up, it only takes a few minor changes to completely change the look and tone of the effect. For example, if I go back to my Particles subgroup, I can quickly change both the color and image type. With a few minor tweaks, I can go from this to this. And that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care.